the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. I'm sure you all knew that already. We are in the color of green, which stands for, is symbolic for our growth as disciples. So in this time of the church year, which is the longest time, we look at how we grow in our faith, in our walk with Jesus. So they say not to go and talk about everything you've done in the past, but to talk about things you do in the future. Robin will talk about some things that are coming up, but I just have to tell you about this last week. First of all, I was at camp with, I think, about 60 middle schoolers, three of whom were ours, and we had a wonderful time. It was Elliot, Max, and Daphne, and we just had a spectacular time. Camp is a great place. It's one of the gems of our synod, and uh, the program director will be here July 28th. Now, the other thing we did was we had a revival on Thursday night. What was the name of that uh, park? Riverfront Park. If, if you haven't been there, you should go. It was lovely. And Phil said to me this morning, it was a magical night. Our own Todd uh, played drums and also gave a testimony, which was authentic and pure and, and inspiring. And then we heard from three other people, one of whom was our bishop. It was so lovely. I just want you to say, I just want to tell you, and it's a bit of a confession. The first time I heard about this, I said to my husband, a revival, what are they thinking? We're Lutheran. No one will come. <laughs> That's the kind of pastor you have. My husband quietly said, just see what happens, Bob. He calls me Bob. And it was wonderful. And there were members from Elam there, and we got to meet other church members. It was a lovely night. Magical, Phil. Um, the other thing is that this is the first time back with Mark and Audrey. <laughs> and we're so happy to have you back. Um, and the last thing is that the... Oh, you can say something, yes. Very brief. Okay. This is the only place I know of where I can get a standing ovation just for showing up. <laughs> Very nice, Mark. Thank you. The flowers on the altar are in celebration of Kathy and George Matt being married for 67 years. And Kathy had surgery. She encourages you all to uh, get your colonoscopy on time. And her doctor just told her the good news that she doesn't need chemo or radiation. <laughs> and continued prayers for our Bob. Bob, we know that's not a fashion statement, so we are continuing to pray for you. Yes, yes. Let's worship. Where's Robin? Oh, there she is. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Come support our youth going to the National Youth Gathering in New Orleans this July by purchasing a ticket to the Jazz Lunch Fundraiser today in the Fellowship Hall. Tickets will be sold at the door. And if you've ever had the NOLA food here, you know it's good. Summer barbecues are canceled this week due to the heat. We will resume on July 10th. So don't show up here Wednesday, okay? The Elam office will be closed this Thursday in observance of the 4th of July. Next Sunday, July 7th, Richard Maxson will begin his four-week adult education class on Arab, Palestinian, and Israeli conflicts. A historical perspective in the choir room at 11.15 a.m. Please note that Little Shepherd Preschool is in summer session. Contact the office if you need to get into the church building during preschool hours. Summer office hours will be by appointment for Aaron due to shuffling kids to and from camps and activities. Second mile giving for June goes towards Petaluma Bounty. 
Please pass the attendance clipboard down the pew, then place the form in the offering basket. These help us connect with visitors and keep our active member list up to date. Thank you. Please read the Elam Express for more details about these and other announcements. Thank you, Robin. Would you please stand for the opening hymn, We Come to You for Healing, Lord. was one more thing I forgot to tell you. Our kids club met yesterday and we went bowling and our office manager, not that we're seeing, you know, we, we really don't care who got the highest points, right? What do you call that? The highest score? But Aaron won. <laughs> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we implore you to hear the prayers of your people. Be our strong defense against all harm and danger, that we may live and grow in faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. A reading of Psalm 30. Please read responsibly. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing praise to the Lord, all of you faithful. Give thanks in holy remembrance. God's wrath is short. God's favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping spends the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with my Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. Please stand for the reading of the gospel.
Holy Gospel for this sixth Sunday after Pentecost is found in the Gospel according to St. Mark, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, <clears throat> fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come <coughs> and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. <coughs> now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had. She was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd, touched his cloak, for she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately, her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Jesus said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement he strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. No, we'll let her go first. children's message. Ooh, bonk. How is everybody? Yeah, you did pretty good at bowling, right? Yeah, but remember, your mom won, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jacob, you did pretty good, too. Yeah. And there he is! And Sterling bowled for the first time in his life yesterday. And, and did you, is your dad here? Yeah. So should we tell him that you beat your dad? Or should yeah. we not tell him that? Yeah, we should. Oh, we should. Okay. Yeah. His dad has really good form. You can tell he's a bowler, but hasn't bowled in a long time. And you beat him, right? Yeah. We had fun. But I got second place. You got second place. You're right. You're exactly right. Our next Kids Club event is a pool party. 
So we'll let you know when that is, because we don't know the date, right? Okay. So, a while back, I think we had some visitors. We love visitors, but sometimes, you know, visitors may not understand everything that we do here, and that's okay, right? Right. I think somebody accidentally took Flat Jesus home. We haven't seen him since. <laughs> so, Barb and I, we could wave to Barb because she watches this online. She helps us, well, she actually does the bulletin, and then Fran prints it. Barb and I got this Jesus, and he's a new and improved Jesus. Sarah says he looks like a Gumby Jesus. <laughs> Sarah. He's not a flat Jesus, so I, we, for our children's message today, we're gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna have you all close your eyes, and I'm gonna hide him, but what should we call him? Because he's not flat Jesus anymore, right? Why don't we, why don't we just keep calling him? Oh, just keep calling him flat Jesus? Okay. He is a little flat. He is a little flat, yeah. I mean, most people, yeah, when they turn sideways like that, they're, I mean, he's like really skinny now. Yeah. So, okay. Should we just say flat Jesus? Okay. Skinny Jesus. <laughs> Well, we could, we, could think, we could talk about this more. We could talk about it while you're eating the jazz luncheon, um, luncheon food. Everybody, everybody's coming. Everybody's coming. Everybody's coming. Everybody's coming. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that meal sounds good. I think it is gonna be good. Okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to close your eyes, no peeking. I am going to hide. I'm so good at this. You're so good at this. You've done this before. <laughs> I'm going to hide flat Jesus, okay? Okay. Robin, where, where do you think? Oh, that's the other one. Okay. Okay, open your eyes and remember, no, this is the chancel, no running on the chancel, okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Nathan, are you going to come up and look? Jacob. Jacob's going to look. What did Jason bowl yesterday? Fifty. Can we do hot and cold? I mean, Jacob. Well, bumpers and the little thing. Okay. Okay. Careful with all the stuff. children's bulletin. Oh, you and Nathan? Oh, okay. Well, maybe like halfway through the worship service, you could get up and go hand it to Nathan, and he could play with them for the rest of the worship service, and then afterwards, you could hide them together, okay? Yeah, for next Sunday. Okay, let's... Yeah, you're going to play with them for, you know, like, have them hang out with you. Yeah, uh-huh. And then you can hand them over to Nathan halfway through. Yeah, okay. All right, let's pray. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, thank you so much, thank you so much for, always for always being with us. Thank you so much, thank you so much for, all the ways for all the ways you make us laugh, make us laugh and, you and you help us to love others. To love others. We, ask all of these things we ask all of these things in the strong name of Jesus. In the strong name of Jesus. And all God's children say together, Amen. All right. Thank you. Oh, could you? Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Um, Era, well, you could go back and give it to them. Yeah. Okay. What are you doing, Johan? What are you doing? What are you doing? You're silly. Uh, thank you for the offers of throat lozenges, your butterscotch. I haven't had one of these in years. Great. So there are two things I want to do before I start my sermon. And one of them is to read a thank you note from our Robin, who is our assisting lay minister. And I was going to put it up on the board, and we still will. But, you know, 
Maybe 10% of you will read it. I don't know, maybe more of you read the board than I give you credit for, but I thought it was so beautiful I wanted to share it. And with Robin's permission, I'm going to read it. Dear PK and my Elam family, thank you Elam from the bottom of my heart for all the flowers, cards, gifts, and all the wonderful treats on the day of my commissioning as an assisting lay minister. I feel so very honored. It's nice writing, but that word was a little unclear. I feel so very honored to be serving Elam as the ALM. I look forward to worshiping with you all in this new, okay, in this new role and I'm very excited to be serving alongside Pastor Catherine. Thank you again for everything, including all the pictures and videos you sent me. But most of all, thank you for your prayers and your support. I am truly blessed that you are all a part of my life. With love and peace, Robin Merrill. We had lunch with the bishop on Thursday, and he wants a copy of our commissioning service and is going to uh, share it with other churches in our synod. Uh, the second thing is to say that I was at Mount Cross this last week, and I've already shared that with you. But this provides a space for our young people to get to know Jesus better and to be reminded how much God loves us. And Sam Garcia will be here on the 28th. And Daphne and her dad, Nathan, along with Sam, will do the hymn of the day. And we will be collecting uh, our shekels for Mount Cross is our second mile giving in July. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts and minds be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our creator, and our Redeemer. Amen. So we live under the illusion that we are in control. We take our vitamins. We make our five-year financial plans. We get people to come, like Sheldon, and help us make a strategic plan for three to five years. We invest. We go to church. We go to the gym or we walk in our neighborhood. We raise our children by the book. And nine-tenths of the time, it all seems to work out. We think if we just do the right things, everything will work out. Until something doesn't. Like when the doctor comes in and draws a picture of your child's heart and then tells you that in 10 days from now, he'll be having open heart surgery. Or when you go into the doctor's office with your mom and the doctor says, here's where the tumor is and we can't really do anything for it. Sometimes we may say after an event like that, I feel so out of control, when really we haven't lost control of our lives. What we've lost is the illusion that we ever had control to begin with. Our lives are wonderful. Our bodies are amazing. It's good to take care of our bodies. And it's good to make plans with our church and with our family, our friends. But we can't control everything. There are limitations. We can't choose whether to have asthma or not whether to get cancer or not. All we can really choose is how to respond, right? How to respond in these circumstances. And that's where courage comes in. Because usually, when we discover that we are out of control, we move over and we let fear drive the boat. The Bible is full of stories where this happens. Remember last week when the disciples were in the boat with Jesus and the storm come up, came up? The disciples are terrified. They ask Jesus, don't you care that we are perishing? 
And he asks them, why are you afraid? Have you no faith? Our two stories today in the Gospel of Mark. One story intercalated with the other. Now there's a nice word, right? That you don't often get to use every day. Intercalated. Mark does it more than once. It's something Mark likes to do with stories. You could say maybe that he has ADHD because he starts telling one story and then he says, oh yeah, and then he starts telling another story. But he remembers to go back to the first story. First of all, Jairus shows up. He's terrified that he's going to lose his daughter. He's not even Jewish. He feels out of control, and he's going to give this rabbi an opportunity to heal his daughter. On Jesus' way to heal him, the worst possible news arrives. It's too late. She's gone. Why trouble the teacher anymore? Then Jesus, Jesus delivers the shortest sermon of his life. Do not fear, only believe. These words are for us as well. We are not to be afraid. We are to believe. Only, what are we to believe? What are we to believe? That all of our prayers will be answered? That if we pray a certain way, or just have enough faith, that we'll get what we want? That things will turn out the way we think they should? The storm stopped. The little girl and the woman were healed. How can we get these results? I don't believe that's what these stories are about. I don't think they're about how to get God to do what we think God ought to be doing, which is just another way of trying to stay in control, right? Mark wanted the people to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus is who he says he is, so that later, when he's gone, they would not lose heart. He wanted them to believe that even when he was not around, talking and walking with them, that he still had the power to calm their storms and bring healing to them to restore them to life in new and different ways. Jesus' death and resurrection would change everything. One man, allowing himself to lose control of his own life, would receive it back again. His death and resurrection would reveal who is in control, who redeems our lives, and who it is that conquers death for all time, forevermore. It is our holy God. Can I hear an amen? Amen. So, it seems we have a choice, fear or belief. I don't know anyone who believes all the time. At our Redwood Mountains Conference revival worship, that I spoke about this morning. Four people gave their testimonies, one of them our brother Todd. Each person shared honestly, including our good bishop, about their life, about a time in their life when they felt lost or afraid, and how God's presence was made known to them and gave them courage, perseverance, and faith. It was beautiful hearing their testimonies. Fear or belief? They are definitely different, but it does seem like we have a choice. Like the woman who made the choice to leave her fear and reach out to Jesus on the road that day. She dropped her fear or you could say she somehow managed to reach through her fear and touch Jesus. 
women were not allowed to touch men in public, and especially a rabbi. Who touched me? Jesus asked. He felt the power go away from him. She answered in fear and trembling. I did. And then she told Jesus the whole truth. Sometimes fear and belief do a little dance in our hearts and minds. Barbara Brown Taylor is someone who I enjoy reading. She's an Episcopal priest who uh, is now a professor and graduated from my divinity school. I have shaken her hand before on three occasions. Here's what Mother Barbara wrote about belief. Belief is not a well-fluffed nest or a well-defended castle high on a hill. It's more like a rope bridge over a scenic gorge. Sturdy, but swinging back and forth with plenty of light and plenty of air, but precious little to hang on to except the stories that you have heard. That it is best that the best and only way across, that it will bear your weight, and that it will be possible. All you have to do is believe in the bridge more than you believe in the gorge below. But fortunately, fortunately, you have to believe in it all by yourself. Oops, I left out a word. You don't have to believe in it all by yourself. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. There are others to believe in it for you and with you, and even some to believe it when your belief grows thin. They have crossed the bridge ahead of you and they're waiting on the other side, cheering you on. It takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of courage to be a human being, doesn't it? But if Jesus was who he said he was, the bridge will hold. Believing in him will not put us in charge or get us what we want, or even save us from all harm, but believing in him, we may gradually lose some of our fear that you know and I know can sometimes paralyze us. Brothers and sisters in Christ, whatever it is we find ourselves facing in our lives, we may finally learn by and with God's grace to live with it, even maybe to love it, if only because we believe Jesus lives and he loves our lives and he loves the whole world, no exceptions. And we trust and we believe that Jesus is always there, holding his hand out to us and lifting us up. Amen. Would you please stand for the hymn of the day, Your Great Name. Star.
in the communion of saints and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer. God of abundance, you fill your church with a multitude of gifts. Sustain those among us who feel they are not valued. Open our hearts to the wondrous breath of all who call upon your name. We especially pray for our siblings who are LGBTQ. 
May we all be aware of your grace and love for all of your children. In your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of creation, your goodness abounds. Multiply the fruits of the earth and rescue it from our wastefulness. Strengthen and keep safe the firefighters who are working to put out the fires in our state. In your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of justice, you reign in steadfast love. Bring peace between nations ravaged by war or strife and illumine paths of justice and freedom for those who lead them. We pray for peace in the United States, Ukraine, and the Middle East. In your mercy. God of compassion, your touch brings healing and your word revives us for life. We especially pray for healing for Jim, Lini, Robin, Segrin, Joel, Tom, Nancy, Deborah, Amy, Kathy, Lily, Mark, Bob, Dawn, Brian, Ruth, and those we name silently and aloud. Hear our prayers for all who are in need and for doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers who provide care. Turn wailing into dancing and weeping into joy. In your mercy. God of the ages, great is your faithfulness. We remember in thanksgiving our beloved dead who with all the saints sing without ceasing in your realm of glory. In your mercy. O oh God, bless all those celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, and celebrations of all kinds this week. Fill our hearts with love and acceptance. In your mercy. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray the offering prayer. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Would you please stand for the passing of the peace? The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. And now share that peace with one another. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is like it is our thanks and grace. which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And you at home may take your bread, the body of Christ given for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me and those of you worshiping from home, the blood of Christ shed for you. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated, and would our communion assistants please come forward.
Elam, all are welcome to come forward to receive Holy Communion. We have wine and grape juice. The wine is the darker color in the larger chalice. You may entinct your bread in that, or the grape juice is the lighter color. The gifts of God for the people of God come, for all is now ready. Cynthia and Walt will direct you forward.
stand as you are able. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask, and you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray, amen. And now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. And before we sing the closing hymn, I would like to welcome Lawrence's family from Sweden. Right, Lawrence? Uh, he's actually my ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> we are so delighted that you're both here. <laughs> Welcome. Okay, okay. Linnea and Anita, welcome. <laughs>